Hey everyone, this is Elias from RevMatch Media, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the 2022 Mercedes C300 4Matic. Now, we've driven the E-Class, which is bigger, and we've driven the A-Class, which is smaller. Um, could this be the perfect size? Well, let's go ahead and get started. We get started in the front and <laughs> Yeah, it really does look like a, nin a mean Ninja Turtle, a, a, a mad Ninja Turtle. I can't get past that, but it's good. It's, it's funny, but I, I do enjoy, enjoy the front styling of this. There's a lot to this front end too. So a couple of things. We do have the beautiful LED headlights here. I do like the uh, kind of boomerang for the turn signal there. Um, but yeah, I like the design. Really lights up the road. Very clean and very clear there. Now. Uh, yeah, this is in white and um, I don't really normally like white cars, but it looks really good in white. I do like the C300 in white, but that's because this has the night package. So uh, we're going to get some black trim all around. So we do have this kind of front like little lip spoiler and very minimal but yeah that's in black um we do have a grill a nice a different grill to this and i love this we have the uh, mercedes logo right in here uh, on the grill design itself this has probably been the best looking mercedes grill that i've that i've seen because there's a ton of different variations of their grills but this yeah, this should be standard on every single line of Mercedes. So I love that design. Then we have the camera system, which is one of my favorites with Mercedes. Uh, so this has a 360 degree camera system. My favorite thing about it is that you can uh, GPS pin uh, different locations. So I actually pinned my driveway and when I get near the driveway, it actually activates the camera system so that I can go ahead and park in and not worry about having to go look for the hard button of the uh, camera system. So I do love that. And yeah, I don't even have to be in reverse or anything. It automatically turns it on, which is a really nice touch uh, with that. This also does have the augmented reality uh, on it as well. So the camera systems are there uh, by the mirror. But overall, this front end looks awesome. And again, I love, definitely get the night package because it really makes all these little elements stand out, especially when uh, you have this bright white color. Let's go ahead and see what we have under this hood. We get under the hood and we have the 2.0 liter inline four cylinder turbo engine with a mild hybrid system. It is cranking out 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. It is connected to the nine speed auto and then to the Mercedes 4Matic system. Now, the first thing I noticed with this engine is <laughs> it takes up a lot of space. It's it's a four cylinder. It's a not it's a fairly normal size four cylinder, but this engine bay is really cramped. Um, yeah. <laughs> so a couple of things. Uh, we do have turbo side on this, and we have intake side on that. The crazy thing is, I was looking at how big this turbo is, and it is massive. This thing is huge. <laughs> I'm sure there's so much more potential uh, than what Mercedes is using in this uh, to get those horsepower numbers. But yeah, that thing is massive. The other thing is, I don't know what this plastic is made out of, what, but I went to kind of uncover this and this thing is scorching hot. And that is turbo hot side, literally hot air just coming right up. And yeah, this aluminum trim is kind of, is already cool to the touch, but this is scorching hot. <laughs> but overall, the power is, is really good. Um, the only thing though is at about 4,500, it starts to kind of choke up a little bit. So we do feel a little bit of a power kind of going down till about, I believe is about 5,600 or 6,000 um, is the red line. Um, but yeah, from 45 to about the red line, it, it, you kind of do start feeling it kind of push back a little bit or not push forward as much. The nine speed has been great. Nine speed is super smooth, sh sharp changes, no issues there. The formatic system 
is great. <laughs> and, and you'll see when we, because uh, I do do the reviews different uh, backwards, so I do the drive first and then this kind of stuff after. Um, but there was a moment where the draw, the turn in uh, on one of the, the the turns I was in, the turning was great. Mid corner turning was really good. It you definitely felt the uh, formatic saying okay, you want to turn a little bit more, I'll give it to you. But in a very, very safe way, uh, very, very predictable as far as how much it gave me. So that was really good, especially with these wheels and tires that um, definitely deliver the grip. But yeah, this thing has been really good. It's quiet when you want it to be. You hammer it a little bit and it's gonna get a little bit louder. It does get kind of pumped into the car, um, but it's not too bad. Nothing, nothing that's like, whoa, this is obviously being pumped in. If it wasn't for the fact that I saw that setting there, I wouldn't have noticed. But yeah, this is actually really, really nice. And that mild hybrid system is good. I mean, it, it just delivers that very, it's very, very insignificant amount of power. It's not something that you're gonna feel like, whoa, uh, but it's been really good. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at those wheels and tires. We get down to the wheel and tire package and we have the 19 inch multi-spoke design and it is wrapped in the Goodyear Eagle 225 40 in the front and 255 35 in the back. Now, uh, this wheel and tire package has been good. It's, you know, it does give good grip, um, it's not going to overpower <laughs> the four cylinder under there, uh, especially with the fact that you have uh, not just a grip because this is the, their summer tire. Uh, it does have a good amount of grip, plus the fact that you have the formatic system, which works really well in this in this uh, C300. Um, but yeah, overall, I do love the multi spoke uh, design on here. So, um, yeah definitely go with this route uh, the suspension has been really good when you're in comfort it's really soft and great at absorbing the hits uh, you know the road basically and then when you switch it over to sport or sport plus it does tighten up and it's nice it's still it's still not in the super like you're gonna feel every single bump you know in your teeth or on your back kind of thing but uh it's just enough just enough uh, for that performance feel to it. Um, the only thing, the brakes. The brakes, uh, the brakes themselves are good. That pedal needs definitely reworking. Now, uh, let's go ahead and see what we have on the side. We get to the side and we can see this is a pretty decently sized sedan. Yeah, I, I like the size of this. Like I said, the E-Class was big um, and bigger isn't necessarily bad, but you got to pay for it <laughs> and a class is good because you don't have to pay for much but you are not going to have as much space as you have with this so i feel like like i said this is just the right size at least for me it is so a couple of things with this so we have the uh 19 inch wheels which look really good they really feel fill the wheel well there um i didn't realize how low this car actually is this is actually pretty on the low side um, compared to others that I've really driven. And yeah, because we have the night uh, night trim on this, we do have the mirrors in black and we have the camera here, uh, again, to help out with the 360 degree view, which I love in this Mercedes. And because we have the night trim, uh, we do have the black framing around the windows, which is just so much better than chrome. I, I really love the black trim, especially on a white car. Now, two things I wish they would have put in black, the handles. So the handles are still in the chrome color and the side skirt is actually really nice. It's really low too. Um, but I wish the, the blade part of the uh, side skirt would have been in that black, especially again, when you're paying for the, for the night trim, uh, it definitely would have made this, you know, just add that little extra to it. But the other thing I wanted to discuss is I was, when I was framing the shot, I was trying to find the center and I was trying to use this as the center line, but it really isn't. And I think that's what I really love about the proportions of this is that it's a little bit more on the front heavy. It's front more front heavy. And I feel like the, this side is a little bit pushed back and that is shortened. So it's almost like a roadster feel, which I, I've always loved those proportions and that kind of uh, language, size language. But 
yeah, I think this is why I like the C-Class so much. Now, I do have the key fob in my pocket, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand, and immediately recognizes it, and I can just go ahead and open, and I'm good to go. So I can go ahead and close this off. I do have the little button to, to lock there, and it locks, and now I can go ahead and grab back here. Yeah, it unlocks. And guess what? I can lock it from back there as well. Yes, why, why doesn't every car with keyless entry have this function? What I mean by that is a lot of times we, we can't grab the back handle, we have to grab the front handle. Um, you know, and, and we can't lock it in the back, we have to lock it from the front. When you have kids, when you have groceries, when you have pets, and you really may not have your, you know, your hands full, um, having to reach for your pocket, and for the key fob, it's always gonna be on the wrong side of what you're holding. <laughs> it, it's just nature, really. Um, but yeah, uh, this is really good. This is what you really want to have. So good on you, Mercedes. Now let's go ahead and head to back and see what we have back there. We get to the back and I love this trunk design. It's really sleek. I love the, the fact that it's shortened, but inside, it doesn't shorten the space. I, it really still has a lot of space. But yeah, I love this smaller uh, trunk lid there. Um, again, with this being the night uh, trim, we do have some black trim down here. The black exhaust tips would have been nice, but yeah, except it'd be pointless because it's completely blocked off. There is literally a black uh, a plastic plate in the back. So yeah, these are incredibly fake. Uh, it's a shame. It's a shame because they actually have a nice design to them. Um, but we'll get moving on. The taillights are really nice design. I love the sweeping um, component of it. But yeah, really, really a nice rear. Now, I do have the key fob in my pocket. And this thing has something that I saw when I opened up the, the trunk. It had a little sticker, which basically, and with a, a QR code, so I scanned it. And it was a little video. And... Yeah, watch the video. So apparently you're supposed to kind of move the key fob and place your foot underneath, which again, it's not, there we go. <laughs> Just, I wasn't doing it the right way, yeah. So we do have the option of basically having the trunk open up on its own with a little kick sensor. And that's that little sticker there. So if you need to find out how to do it, just go ahead and scan that. It'll take you to a little video. If you do have, for other B, uh, Mercedes that have, um, you know, maybe the SUVs that have a tow package, um, you don't put your foot under it, but you put it on each side. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. <laughs> so we open it up with your foot and there's a good amount of space. There is a large amount of space. This opening is actually really big for a mid-sized sedan. Um, typically this is where they, they suffer because you have the window, you know, you can't really fit a big box, but this was actually surprising really good. So yeah, this is, uh, it's a good size. You can definitely fit a large amount of luggage in here. So we'll go ahead and close that off. And we'll grab the key fob and we don't have remote start because you have to have the subscription. You have to have that whole thing on your phone. Just give it to me on the key fob. That's all I need. That's all I want. Let's go ahead and jump in and go for a ride. You get inside of the C300 and I can see a big evolution from the previous Mercedes interiors. And I've, there's a couple of things I didn't like, but I am liking it now. It just takes me a little bit more to warm up <laughs> just because I'm getting older, don't change things <laughs> kind of thing. We'll get to that. But yeah, we get started on the door and the door has a couple of things, uh, like I said, some changes in it. Um, my favorite is definitely the armrest. The armrest has this kind of semi-floating design to it, um, but it, it's still connected at one point and, you know, with a little plastic bar kind of thing. Um, but it would have been nice, would have been awesome if it were just kind of 
you know disconnected there and it was just kind of hanging out it would have been a, a really nice design to it but it still is a nice design and yeah we can see <laughs> whoever picked this uh, color design thank you uh, because I love the red interior the other thing that has changed is kind of the button on how you move the seat so the the seat kind of buttons uh obviously we have them on the door with it being mercedes they are a little bit different i do like this new design um it is a little bit easier uh, for me at least to break down and see what things move the seat so yeah like that design now this does have heated seat option only um yeah we definitely would like the cooled option here in texas especially when it is 90 degrees already and it's not even nine o'clock then we get to the seats and these things are incredible yeah they're black and red <laughs> which is my favorite i love the way that they look i love the way that they feel but my favorite thing about these is this headrest so on the left side actually yeah left side on both of them there's a little kind of button and you can you can move this headrest back and forth that's crazy because i didn't realize how much you know you, you kind of float your head and you know when you're driving and a lot of seats when a lot of seats are kind of like that so you're having to kind of like you're literally like looking up but this you kind of my trick to it was i had my head floating kind of thing and then i pushed the button and i just got it close to me till it felt comfortable and right there it feels really comfortable so it feels like someone is holding your head as you're driving yeah <laughs> so it's definitely a huge huge improvement and it's not just up and down like i said it's coming out to you which is the biggest thing really because then yeah you can get it up and down but then you're just having to still kind of lean back and your sight is looking up and you're or you're having to look down but yeah that's such an awesome thing i do love that design there then we get over to the wheel and yeah this is not a bad looking wheel i really like the design of it uh it is a flat bottom which is always a favorite uh but yeah the leather on the side is really really nice uh it's got a little bit of of give to it which is nice nice and comfortable it's not too too hard um and we have the dimpled leather on the grabbing surface so to speak on the on the three and nine kind of area and then we have the kind of softer um smooth leather on top and bottom uh the stitching is a little bland it's black i wish it would have been red to really match the theme of the uh, seats themselves but yeah it's it's nice it's got the buttons in the front um that are not really buttons it's got like kind of sensors half sensors kind of thing where with the volume i do miss that little wheel that we had in the previous um wheels yeah it, it the volume up and down kind of looked like a cheese grater so to speak so i do miss that as opposed to this kind of like sensitive like sensor kind of thing and yeah the little joystick thing is i don't know i miss that the blackberry kind of joystick it doesn't it's a little tough to use on on here with this kind of flat area there this also has the paddle shifters in the back which are nice they're kind of on the smaller side um but honestly they are they're good i, I don't i don't know if i really need anything else because they kind of really stick out towards the edge of the wheel so i don't have to kind of really like go back towards the center of the of the wheel itself so they they come out really nice so yeah really good job there mercedes and then we get to the gauge cluster the gauge cluster has changed a little bit we do have different menu options as far as how they look um, this is more on the like what we saw in the uh, mercedes s class but yeah um i wish the sport were a little bit different because i kind of like the old sport a little bit more like the sport view this is a little kind of if you're in the sport mode or you're taking this out on the track or whatever the case is spirited driving it's a little bit difficult to look down and have to kind of process the information you're getting and then look up as opposed to a more simplified classic <laughs> where you can clearly see okay my red line i'm about to hit the red line not to, that you need to really shift but just saying um but yeah it's i prefer this but different color scheme would have been would have been nice to this and again you have the option of kind of changing the the middle area to 
basically the different modes that you that it has there then i want to talk about the air vents we have up here and like i said there's been some changes and i love this design i love the way that these looked i like the round ones but this gives you a little bit more of a okay cool let's tweak it and let's have fun with it let's let's give it a different look to it so i do like the three uh pods there and i like that they're not um it, it's a more squared off circle so it's a nice shape or rounded rounded squares or rectangles um so yeah it is a nice design element to it um and yeah it just looks good the ac is really cold right now too uh which we definitely need when like i said it was 90 degrees then we come a little bit down to the infotainment system and this is this is one of those things of like i know i'm getting older where it's like don't touch it don't touch it just just let, I finally figured it out. It took me probably four to five B, uh, Mercedes, so that's about four to five weeks to really get comfortable with the previous system. <laughs> and then I get the S Class la a couple of weeks ago, and I'm like, whoa, they completely changed this. And I was thinking, okay, maybe it's just on the S Class. And then I get the C300 now, and I'm like, okay, looks like this is where we're going in the future for Mercedes. So yeah, we do have a different change in the uh, UI or user interface. So there are some different looks to it. There's, you know, there's still some familiar things, but like these, but you are having to get them in a different way or get to them in a different way. So yeah, just heads up. Uh, if you're used to it in the other, in a previous model, it's gonna get a little bit more to get used to, especially when you're going to the settings and you wanna get to the sound system you're having to really kind of okay uh audio like you're really having to go into multiple menus where i want to just get to the equalizer jesus it took that many things to get to the equalizer when before we actually had a sound we had a like sound option uh or i remember seeing something and i remember get, being able to get quick to it yeah so that was kind of a thing that i was a little annoyed by it. yeah but yeah we have apple carplay it is wireless uh which is the next thing i want to talk about uh, we do have the wireless charger in here it is really good um uh, because it communicates really well with the mercedes and i can go ahead and close that off and have a nice clean area here it has my charger in there it has a usb in case you don't want to do it wirelessly uh charging there um, but you can close this and it's out of the way. It's nice and clean. I love this. I love this a lot. And the pattern just looks really, really nice. Um, but you open it up and you got your cup holders. Cup holders work really well. No complaints there. Everything seems to have, you know, worked every cup that we put in it. No complaints there. So go ahead and close that up to clean it up. And then we come back to the armrest. The armrest is nice and comfortable. There's, uh, you know, the red leather on there as well. And what I like about it is that you can have it uh, kind of split open and you're able to kind of put your things in there. Don't expect too much storage. It is a very small uh, area. It is kind of on the shallower side of things. Then we get to the back seats and the back seats are pretty good. So again, we do have that red, <laughs> red and black design, which looks really, really good, um, but yeah it's it's a good space my kiddo enjoyed it hasn't had any issues with it um so yeah kid seat would be no problem we have him in the booster seat um but yeah i don't see it being an, an issue getting uh, a full-size kid seat in there then we get to the trunk and the trunk area was big i was surprised i was surprised at how big uh you know there was and like i said you can definitely fit um you know five people's worth of luggage in there um but yeah it's a, a good amount of of uh for a weekend kind of thing um so yeah it was a pretty good trunk plus the fact that you have that kick sensor which was nice now let's talk performance we're dealing with the 2.0 liter inline four turbocharged engine with a mild hybrid system it is cranking out 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque it is connected to the nine speed auto and then to the Mercedes Formatic uh, system. Now, a couple of things with this. Um, it's pretty quiet. It's pretty quiet. And from a standstill, let's go ahead and, so we'll change our drive modes. So we have things like Eco, uh, Comfort, Sport, and then Sport Plus. 
And yeah, I mean, we're affecting things like the engine, the, the steering feel itself, and let's go back to that, and the, uh, the noise. So it does kind of pump in the noise in here. Yeah, you can see sound. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and switch it over again, like I said, to the uh, Sport Plus. And yeah, it's, it's wanting to go already. So we'll hold it down, we'll rev it, and it's not bad. It's not bad. So it, I know when I'm in Mercedes, I usually get AMG models. So it, it's kind of that inline six cylinder a lot of times or the V8. But uh, yeah, with this one, uh, the inline four isn't bad. It's not bad, it's, it's good enough to, to get you in trouble, it really is. And the, the shifts are really nice on that nine speed um, to you know get the power down. And yeah, the shifts, yeah, it's really good. It's pretty instant too. The only thing that kind of scares me with this is the brakes. The brakes, um, the pedal. The pedal is really the, the thing. So the pedal isn't really giving me any feedback till I'm halfway down it's crazy i'm halfway down on the brake and then i feel the feedback and it's not that you know i know what oh that was a good turn in yeah it gave me like mid corner turning that was good yeah good on your formatic <laughs> now again the brakes is just i know what brake boil feels like and it's almost like that um so i i don't think it's a manufacturer thing or i, I don't think it's a like oh you burned the the brake fluid up kind of thing i don't think it's that because yeah it, it it doesn't feel like that i know what that feels like where it's like you're con you just pedal down to the floor this is like you put it down halfway and then it starts kicking in the the pressure on the on the pedal so i do still have pressure but i don't like that that side that feel it really yeah that's about let me see, I think we have a, a sensor here. So we go to info. Yes, we do actually. So we go to vehicle and yeah, you guys can see. So there I'm about a hundred on accelerator, which is, this is really nice. This is a new design where we can see the, the G forces kind of moving uh, across on the top of it. So uh, I don't think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> because I definitely had so okay so yeah that pedal is really long now that I have it set to 100 that pedal is really long and I don't know if I like it because it like I said it's got a lot of just softness to it yeah I, I don't know if I it's it's honestly if I were to take this out on a track day event I'd be a little concerned with it because of you know any brake fade or or just having to basically smash the brake down all the way to get any feedback but as far as the the rest of the performance it's really good the grip is really on there the suspension feels so nice whether you're in the comfort mode or you're in the sport mode uh, that i am right now the other thing i like about this is i feel like this is the right size mercedes like the e-class is nice it's it's big it's comfortable whoa <laughs> it's nice and big and comfortable but the problem with that is the price it's 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 a big price for the e-class especially when you start adding the fun stuff to it the a-class that we've reviewed i felt like that was a little too cramped so i feel like this is the uh <laughs> goldilocks and the three bear this is the just right <laughs> setting it's not too hot it's not too cold it's not too big it's not too small it's just right I, I feel like this is where this falls what would I change with this um I don't know I like a little bit more power but you know uh, probably like a little AMG enhanced yeah because it kind of once it gets to like 4500 it does kind of choke up a little bit uh, with delivering more power so I would say that is the big thing and the brakes yeah let's fix that brake let's give me some more pedal feel immediately after um you know after, as soon as i initiate the actual brake pedal uh to yeah really 
give me a more more confidence that's the big thing that this is lacking you know again and this is more on the side of of me you know getting out there on on performance kind of events or something like that but if you're just using it for an everyday it's not bad because it it prevents you from kind of like you know breaking too hard but yeah there it says four four percent but that i significantly push the brake pedal way more than four (laughs) percent but yeah well guys i hope you've enjoyed my review of the mercedes c300 and remember find the right gear see ya